From this video, you're gonna be learning the following typical themes of the Jobava London. How to play against the early Queen B6 lines, how to attack the Grunfeld setup by pushing the H pawn, how to absolutely demolish the King's Indian by using the Austrian attack, how to punish the early C5 Benoni plus some key principles in the opposite colored bishops endgames. And at the end of the video, we're going to be dealing with a passive, non-standard setup similar to what we could see from the hippo defense. Can pretty much pre-move knight c3, bishop f4 at this point, almost. Yeah, there you see it. And we're facing the Slav. Going to be playing with pawn to e3 and we see queen d6 which is fairly interesting black is attacking this pawn so the standard reaction would be just to defend and yeah the point of this move is that uh, we will no longer cast along as we would normally do against the slav but i still feel like we're getting interesting play based on g4 and i'm guessing we're gonna be using the f2 square for the king as a safe one um, you know depending on how safe a king can be on uh, on f2 but in the structure is actually pretty safe so you don't need to worry about it and we have two plans one of them is bishop d3 but i think i'm gonna be using the other one might be a bit trickier to deal with okay so opponent wants uh that move Putting pressure on to C2. Should we really care? Because we have rook C1 at least. Okay, I think I'm gonna play bishop G3 and I'm gonna be meeting knight B4 with rook H2. And you see the that's like really nice with the extra space. We can make this kind of moves that are controlling yeah, the whole board pretty much. And the idea is just to play uh, knight F4 on the next move and. We want to put pressure on the g6 bishop and this was pretty clever because on the next move we can play a3 and the knight will simply have to go back and uh yeah i'm not sure that was such a such a clever knight jump for my opponent we see f6 but that's actually really inviting me to play knight f4 do we start with a3 so the thing is i want to play knight f4 bishop f5 and then bishop d3 but the problem is he can take with a knight so in order to get rid of that i'll start with a3 and after the knight goes back then we will do knight f4 with uh, bishop d3 ideally we're going to be able to use that weak square on g6 after the bishop trade so i'm going to be taking with a queen i think that is for sure and big fella of check, also knight g6. I think he has to castle, but it doesn't really look uh, <laughs> very appealing. We have knight g6 as a move in this position, kind of forcing rook g8. They may be just um, taking twice on e5, collecting the pawn. Kind of want more though. Also, I, I believe, by the way, there's this knight h5, but I don't like it because he can simply castle. Obviously, the knight uh, is untouchable because of queen g6. Um, yeah, can we throw in this check? He's got like king e7, I mean, not really. King e7 runs into knight d5. So if we actually go for the check, king d8 only move knight e6. I mean, that looks very promising. I don't know, I'll just play it yeah that was the only move can go in with a knight and then on king e7 could simply take on f8 i guess okay he goes to c but isn't that like a like a pretty funny checkmate <laughs> i thought that's a pretty funny checkmate that we managed to get and opponent resigned which is pretty nice okay getting the white pieces let's go uh, d4 and then knight c3 Okay, he plays the Slav, glad to see the Slav, and now it's going back into the Grunfeld. We're gonna be playing h4, and okay, here, I know you're gonna be screaming like, you have to play h5. But the thing is, with this c6 move on the board, 
that is defending the pawn and uh, I think black is slightly better objectively in those lines. I have played that as black myself and the point here is to start with bishop e2 as white. Preparing h5 and uh, now we're just getting the sort of positional lines with the knight getting into e5 and we're going to be later on uh, trying to expand with f3 g4 but we're going to be playing for long castle first and uh, here remember this really important do not take with a pawn because you're just like slightly worse but this is just really pleasant to play as white and queen d2 long castle i really enjoy to play this kind of positions and I can also tell you from the black side because I played King's India in most of my career and at some point they started doing these lines and I just hated my opponents so badly. It's just so easy to play as white and with black is really really annoying like you have to know what you're doing very well. For example I think this is a pretty bad move positionally because in the future we're gonna be breaking with g4 or maybe even e4 so that's only helping us. and. Yeah, I think from like navigating with a computer in this kind of lines, something like a5, queen d2, and b5 should be recommended. Or even in this position, I think a5 is very interesting move, and like queen d2, b5, and some like really weird lines. If black knows what he's doing, I think it's fine, but people generally don't understand the opening so well. Not even in the main lines, but this is sort of a. I think people generally consider it, this as somewhat of a sideline from white's perspective and now we can just castle and play rook dg1 followed by g4 or maybe just castle and sacrifice the pawn with g4 i think we might be sacrificing it works pretty well generally so yeah we'll see i guess when we get there and b5 the thing is if you're trying to create counterplay with black going b5 White can simply ignore it and after b4, knight a4, I mean guess what, you're not only worse on the king side, but you're worse also on the queen side because you gave away this <laughs> important square on c5. So it's like a really frustrating uh, line to deal with. Just castling. Okay, queen b6 is kind of pointless since it's blocking the pawns that you're supposed to gain counterplay. So I mean, I guess just pushing a5 and then trying b5, but it's it's definitely slower than white's initiative and yeah bishop e6 i told you the bishop is misplaced there he's losing another tempo so i think we just uh, go g4 we're, we're punishing these things maybe objective is speaking e4 was good but just gonna be sticking with the super standard play and pawn takes we're sacrificing <clears throat> just trying to open things up could also maybe take back something that you should definitely bother about is you never want to take in just so you can keep equal pawns. It's not working like that. We just want to go for the full attacking mode. And G takes H5, maybe just rook DG1. And stay like that. 97, just take, take on H5. It's pretty bad for black now on the king side. They can't take, I think, because they're getting mated with rook G1 and D4. So if you get to take and push H5, it's still, uh, still a disaster. Yeah, I think black is simply lost and this is like a very good illustration of why it is so annoying to deal with this line. So see, a5, we're already there almost mating. You think this will be in time? Give him two extra moves, we can just play b3 and we still have it under control. So this is just uh, completely winning now. I guess I'll start with e4 just because uh, we'll need the queen to deliver the checkmate. I think taking on g6 was also fine. Just play d4 because it felt more flexible, so to speak. Mm, okay, I mean, I could take back. Yeah, taking back is easiest. Just keeping the pawns and take on g6 next, followed by h5. Yes. Again, opponent has zero counterplay and his king side is getting opened up absolutely no counterplay j rook a8 but just queen g5 coming closer big flat i'm assuming rook h6 will get played but uh, just e5 should be an easy win h5 
in that position even queen e5 was interesting plays bishop f7 instead which yeah it's it's interesting but uh, could do many things here just d5 should be good mm, taking is also fine i guess taking is the easiest one just gonna go with it and okay taking with a bishop should be losing to this and on rook h1 uh, i have the intermezzo to take and then i can take back the rook so we can even win it without calculating more than <laughs> two moves yeah collecting this next and this is mating threat yeah okay he resigns so that's like how easy you can still win in 1900s rating i think even above that because i mean honestly speaking i didn't really had any hard moves to make like for example starting with this i had to play this precise bishop e2 move in the opening that i knew from preparation and then yeah i mean this common sense rule of taking with the bishop on e5 followed by f3 because the thing is some people start uh queen e2 but okay that could allow some knight e4 in some lines so for this reason i started f3 and then normal development just push the jeep on and yeah if they take by the way i would have gone there and just play rook dg1 i i am pretty sure this is gonna be a mating attack they can pretty much never take on f3 and we can play e4 and bring the queen he won't be able to <laughs> defend the king side and they have no kind of play so this is really really nice in the white pieces let's go for the job of london uh we do see the modern just going for the most aggressive setup gonna be playing the austrian attack uh, bishop g4 this is not an amazing line gonna be playing h3 maybe we can recreate the bobby fisher against uh, benko classical game does go for castle yeah now i think we just go e5 with a big advantage but we can like no longer get into the fisher benko game maybe i can play bishop d3 and still hope to get something similar Okay, I'll do it just so we can maybe get it for the content. And now f5 is the thing. But like, instead of this, you can just play e5 and I think you're having a crushing advantage. But now, uh, okay, these positions are also playable. Queen f2 and they usually go like c6, b5. Okay, c5 I think it's inaccurate. Now we play g4. Could also castle, but not sure I need it and big threat is g5 and f6 and we're killing all of uh, black's pieces on the king side so this is like an important reaction by the way in some lines when black is able to get this remember you take this way because what like a lot of people do they end up uh, taking and going d5 and black is getting a lot of kind of play after knight d4 so this is like important move i'm like explaining these lines quite a lot in my course and then f5 and why there's a nice initiative just plays a6 but that is clearly losing way too slow i think now he should be sacking the piece somehow because moving the knight and allowing f6 is just a disaster yeah but the thing is we have a lot of space and uh black is not really opening up any lines against our king so it's not really risky okay knight h5 just f6 no need to calculate this no like knight d5 threatening to win the queen rook e8 like only move but then maybe just play c3 this is just uh, a crushing position wow we're winning his queen right with knight e7 that is so nice he's got like no kind of play has to give up the queen poor guy <laughs> poor guy <laughs> jesus that was the mate on the board okay How do we finish this one quickly? Just by taking, I guess. Could also castle. 
I guess castling long is fine. I mean, I can take the knight, but I'm, I'm opening up some lines. Maybe just pushing the h pawn. Obviously, everything wins. So maybe taking and only move to take with a c pawn and then just push. Yeah, I think I like this one better. Bishop still kind of doomed. We open up the h file and we mate. He literally has a minor piece for the queen. Okay, he goes there, but now the bishop activates. <laughs> Some trouble uh, on f7. Okay, bishop d5, hitting the rook. Bringing this one over. Okay, he wants knight f4 with knight d3. Okay, I'll have queen d2 against uh, knight f4. Stopping the fork and threatening this one. Plus also h5. Okay, first of all, he's not really threatening to take because he's still lost. I think he can take on f4. Maybe taking on f4 is like simplest, but then he takes on c2 and plays d. He is actually not in time with d3. Has to play uh, rook back to c7 and then rook f1 is. Yeah, that's just easy win. Gonna go for it. Yeah, if d3, we have c3. Plays b4, but just rook f1, sort of ending the game. Rook f8 only move, but that drops the rook. Okay, I thought that should be a mate. Just bishop takes. And, I mean, <laughs> anything, like queen d6, queen f6, something. Yeah, like rook e7, bishop g6. Yeah, maybe I had like a force mate, just collecting his bishop seems easiest to me <laughs> queen e5 yeah mate on e8 okay we've got the game but i think it was pretty much uh, thanks to this uh, really important way of uh, of capturing and then playing f5 like this is really really important and to be honest this is maybe one of the uh Typical reactions that got me the most points. Like I won an incredibly amount of games just by taking on e5 and playing f5. Not in this super uh, theoretical position, but in uh, in like general cases, when you do this and you go f5, uh, it's just like really really nice. You play g4 and they pretty much have no kind of play in the center, which is really nice. So that is the one thing that I want you to remember and then the rest okay my opponent just played really poorly and he just busted already. We should have played rook 8 but it's still uh, looking pretty pretty bad here like bishop e2 next and push the pawn. Getting the white pieces let's go d4 and then uh, knight c3. We see c5. Uh, okay let's go d5. I've actually looked up this lines uh, very recently gonna be playing knight c3 with the idea to take with a knight e4 and then i think we're still taking with a knight uh that i'm not sure i checked but i guess a4 <laughs> and now i wanted to take one e6 in this position so like the thing is i could still play knight f3 and allow these structures but after doing some analysis with the computer i came to the conclusion that Taking on e6 might be even stronger. Let's go knight f3 and then bishop f4, e5. I think it's the plan. I could have gone e5 immediately as well, but um, yeah, maybe go for it now. It looks like his structure is really messed up. I think we're having nice end games in general. This weak pawn. Bishop goes to like c4, I guess. We're castling short. Knight c6, we would be taking it because we're doubling the pawns. If bishop c7, uh, maybe just knight back to like d3, hitting the pawn on c5. Preparing to castle. Can we take it? I mean, that looks like a free pawn. 
We shouldn't take there though, because he's got rook e8. But we can castle ourselves first, and I think we're up a pawn. Okay, I mean, he's got knight c6, knight d4, maybe a little bit annoying. But I think we should be able to keep it under control somehow. Maybe knight c6, bishop e3. Okay, bishop d6, just knight e4 looks very strong. Knight e6 may be doable as well, but just this, or maybe even using that knight. I think it might not matter really. Maybe it does. Okay, I want to be gaining a tempo, so I'm going to be doing it this way. And now, could just take and play knight d5. Could play knight d5 directly as well. Um, yeah, let's do it this way. Knight d5. Okay, bishop e6 maybe he's got, so perhaps knight e4. Maybe he could do bishop d5. And knight e6, just chop it. I'll do knight d5, bishop e6, knight b6, and take back. I think that's fine. Just trading, and I'm up a pawn. This looks pretty unpleasant. And okay, maybe taking would give him some counterplay. But I don't really buy it, so just taking and going c3. And if knight d4, uh, I think bishop d3, knight b3, rook b1 is is okay for me. Even we have the opposite colored bishops. Feels like should be an easy win. Knight d4, maybe even bishop d5 is better, hitting the pawn on b7. He's got knight d2 check. Although as an uh, additional uh, idea compared to the bishop d3 line, but... Yeah, I mean, I think if rook d8, we start bishop e6, bishop e3, and then just seems crashing with the extra pawn and two bishops. So I think this is like only try for him, realistically speaking, when he goes knight d4. Okay, that should be pretty bad. You can just go, even bishop b3 simply, just retreating is <laughs> quite powerful. Because if I go bishop e6, rook c6, bishop b3, he might be gaining a 10 point some lines. Doubling up on the file. So now even knight f5 is no longer working because of bishop e6. So I like this one better. Just bishop e3. This idea is if knight d5, maybe just take it and rook d1. Trade a pair of rooks. Bring it over to the open file. Just uh, trading everything. We have the extra pawn. Uh, could go bishop c5. Uh, we don't really need it. Just bringing the rook. So training rooks and then we're bringing the king. That is pretty much the play. Also bishop f3 will most likely force him to play knight c6. And if we manage to trade the uh, light square bishop for the knight with the same colored bishops, should be always a win. Um, yeah, here knight d5, bishop f3, knight e3 might be a bit trickier to win because he plays b6 and... It's not uh, so trivial. So maybe just bishop c5. Could do bishop d2 as well. I think just to c5. Looks more active. And this. Big flat. Can we go there? And that is actually a better end game because his pawns are weaker. Compared to like the previous opposite colored bishop end game. Oh, I think I, I could have blundered. Okay, knight c3. Yeah, I had knight c3 and then bishop b6, knight a4. <laughs> that looks actually drawish. Yeah, I actually blundered, but now it's an easy win. At least the bishop end game will be instructive, but okay, I mean, this is dead lost. <laughs> he won't be able to defend both pawns with this uh, structure and. It's clearly winning for me. But he had the draw with knight c3. Because I uh, I made that silly blunder. 
and okay there's no way this bishop will protect both pawns and it's just an easy win despite the opposite colored bishops the thing is uh people have a false impression that uh, with the opposite colored bishops you can draw any end game that you are down a pawn and i actually used to think like that for a long period of my career but after some uh, more in-depth uh, discussions with my coach i came to the conclusion that uh, it's actually pretty damn tricky to to defend even when you are down a single pawn not to mention when you're like down two pawns it's pretty much always uh, lost if like the pawns are not doubled obviously or any <laughs> anything like that yeah now it's just a uh, free push with the pawns we could even uh, stack the bishop for fun you can have it mate yeah it's yours all yours baby <laughs> i don't mind it okay only forward Not a queen, but two. That's how I like it. Queen g3. Uh, oh, I wanted to play queen a8 to f4. That would have not been a not been a legal move. <laughs> okay, queen f4. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> this is the weirdest geometrical motive I've seen in a while. <laughs> It's pretty nice when you're up to queens. Not gonna lie, everyone I think is a master with two queens on the board. Pieces, let's go d4 and uh, nice three. Wow, opponent pre moves e6, bishop e7. Uh, we'll keep the jababa. And yeah, how do we deal with this? I think we'll just uh, cast along, give it a try. Maybe he's got uh, e5, but I think d. And now, yeah, just like developing. Play e4. Next move, I think. And this should be quite a disaster for my opponent. I can play a3. I, I feel like that's a good move. And the case of b5, maybe there is d5. Um, and like b4, d takes on c6. Yeah, that feels good. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have it on the board. And problem is, uh, if we can take that, it's <laughs> pretty much game over for, uh, for black. And okay, I mean, we're gonna see that on the board. I mean, just imagine we have developed all of our pieces and opponent has... Uh, <laughs> How many is that? Like six pieces on the back rank. <laughs> and look at this position. He's also opening up the the center, which in theory should be helping the better developed side. And I think here just to kind of destroy him, we can take on e5 in some lines. But what is actually simplest would be to take with a queen, also hitting the rook. And after rook a5, we're gonna be having bishop e5, knight takes on e5, I think that's easiest. And if rook b8, I think there bishop c4 is ending the game because he's unable to defend that. So I think rook a5 kind of only move, yeah, he plays it, but I think should be lost. This is like <laughs> sort of similar to the Oprah game. It's just that opponent played worse than <laughs> that person in the Oprah game. And we just like take with a bishop, pawn takes, knight takes, knight h6, and knight takes on d7. 
bishop d7 and could take either way threatening to mate by the way <laughs> so that is why this is only move and then okay i mean even knight c6 is a candidate but simplest is uh, okay i forgot about the check but i guess it doesn't change much and yeah take twice on d7 that's pretty much it could take with a queen just to trade queens but i feel like taking with a bishop should be better and yeah like king d6 king d7 queen d6 is made so king f8 only move and now maybe simply bishop back and we're gonna be up like three pawns it's not gonna be like the most exciting finish ever but it is completely winning yeah the only thing that i need to <laughs> keep in mind is that we're playing in five uh, minutes flat we no longer get the increment but uh, opponent hangs the bishop so it shouldn't really matter and opponent resigns with the last pawn there was also the <laughs> last hope i guess so thanks a lot for making it this far into the video and if you're looking for more content make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series